Welcome to the next chapter of uh, polymer process engineering. Here we are going to discuss uh, the polymers and polymerization techniques. Now before we go into the detail of this particular chapter, let us have a look about uh, what we discussed in the previous chapter. We discussed about the introduction of polymers, what different type of the polymers are there. Then we discuss about the backbone of those polymers that is called the monomer and how these monomers can join together to form the polymer. Uh, it is their functionality, their covalency, their bonding structure, etc. Then we discuss because in due course of time you will find so many different uh, nomenclature. So, we discussed briefly about the different type of a nomenclature scheme of polymers. Then we had a brief discussion about the different type of a, uh, uh, classification streams of uh, polymers, how we can classify like uh, based on the source, based on the polymerization process, based on the chemistry, all these things that we have discussed. Then it was the duty to discuss about the short history of the polymerization process because uh, it is very important to know that how this polymerization process evolved over the period of time. Now, in this particular a segment, we are going to discuss the different classes of uh, polymerization. Then we will discuss about the polymerization techniques and we will discuss about the different uh, commercial polymers. So, let us talk about the different classes of uh, polymerization. Now, you see that we discussed uh, about uh, the addition and condensation polymerization. Another class is called the chain growth polymerization. This involves the chain growth by a reaction of an active polymer chain with the single molecular um, um, monomer molecule. Now, just for the sake of an example, this is my chain and over the period of time different monomers, this X represents the monomer and different monomers can add on to form the different uh, uh, the, the chain or growth of the chain. So, this is um, uh, you can say that uh, this particular polymerization scheme called the chain growth polymerization. Another is the step growth polymerization. This polymer growth involves the reaction between the macromolecules. So, the chains can get interacted with different uh, uh, other chains. Now, in addition, the non-polymeric byproducts, these may be formed in both types of polymerization. Now, the condensative chain polymerization is a very rare. Now, in chain growth polymerization, monomers can only join active chains. Now, what is the definition of active chains? They must either have a double bond or some functional group present over it and simultaneously that similar type of property monomer should possess. So, the monomer contains the carbon-carbon double bond like ethylene, propylene, styrene, vinyl chloride, butadiene, ester of uh, methyl, uh, methyl acrylate. All these are the best candidate of this type of chain growth polymerization. The activity of chain is generated by either a catalyst or an initiator because something should be there, uh, there to trigger the polymerization reaction. Now, several classes of chain growth polymerization, this can be distinguished according to the type of active center. Now, sometimes active centers, they are referred as a functional group, sometimes other aspects like coordination polymerization. The active center is an uh, active site of a catalyst. So, this triggers the polymerization process. Similarly, the free radical polymerization, the essential active part is the radical. That means you need to form, you need to have a free radical in the reaction mass so that you can propagate these uh, polymerization reaction. Similarly, the anionic polymerization, here the active center is an anion. That means they must possess all the, the sites must possess an anionic uh, structure. Similarly, the cationic polymerization where the active center is a cation. Now, let us talk about the coordination polymerization. The coordination polymerization, they are carried out in a suitable um, catalyst and uh, proceeded by an insertion mechanism in which uh, the monomer uh, units, they are inserted between the catalyst site and growing polymer chain. Like here you see this is the catalyst and this is the monomer or the polymer chain R represents the chain. Now, here you see that this is the linkage between the cat 
the the catalyst and polymer chain so this is called the monomer insertion in coordination polymerization now catalyst for coordination polymerization this includes the ziegler natta catalyst we discussed this ziegler natta catalyst in the previous lecture some sort of a transition metal catalyst and metallocenes now the insertion mechanism is tightly controlled by the catalyst which allows the fine tuning of polymer microstructure including the production of stereoregular polymers now the catalyst uh, development uh, this has been a key technological driving force in the commercial success of coordination polymerization so you see that uh, the engineering of the catalyst is again a vital role so those uh, who are interested in the polymer processes uh, this is one of the way or arena where you can work on the consequence of the control uh, exerted by the catalyst on the polymerization is that a different set of kinetic parameter should be estimated for each catalyst so that is why the polymer reaction engineering study of polymer reaction engineering is important let's talk about the free radical polymerization now in free radical polymerization the active center is the free radical and this free radical is a very reactive na nature and a very reactive species that contains an unpaired electron which always uh, involved to form a pairing now this can be created from an initiator and the polymerization process by addition of monomer units uh, to the active and end of the growing polymer chain uh, that is in course of polymerization this separates from the bound initiator fragment now here you see that this is the initiator and by this way this free radical is shifted to here now it can become a functional site for the further polymerization process now here this can be attached and this by this way they can form the growing chain of polymer or the growing of the polymer chain this is in the free radical polymerization now the growth of the chain uh, is uh, usually terminated by the bimolecular reaction between the two radicals or transfer of the radical in another component that is the monomer chain transfer agent or a polymer now see the truncation is very important because when this particular polymerization process starts may be triggered by the various approaches then all these uh, chains or monomers they can agglomerate and um, this reaction is called the propagation reaction so first start is this one is the initiation and then propagation now the termination why it is important because if you keep on growing all these chains then definitely the molecular weight of uh, your polymer mass will become more and more or it, it 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 can be on the higher side now once it is in higher side then definitely the properties which you are targeting may not cover so that's why the truncation of these polymerization reaction is very important now free radical copolymerization is uh, attractive because uh, large number of monomers that can be polymerized the different media that can be used both organic and aqueous and the react relative robustness of this technique to impurities now in the classified classical free radical copolymerization the only a few polymer chains are growing in the same time and time spent in building a chain is very short typically you can say a fraction of a second to 10 seconds now in addition no stereo regular polymers can be produced by the free radical polymerization so it's a very selective in nature uh, an exception for this particular rule is the pvc in which the bulky chlorine group leads to a highly syndiotactic index now the because of the special uh, species responsible for the most of the chain growth and termination the free radical and monomer this depends on the monomer system the kinetic constants they are determined by the monomer system and allowing the compilation of uh, different table of uh, rate constants for each monomer so this is a very attractive aspect of polymer reaction in studies now in controlled radical polymerization sometimes referred as a crp the extent of bimolecular termination is minimized 
Now, this allows the preparation of almost any kind of copolymer architecture by means of a free radical mechanism. So, all controlled radical polymerization methods, they are having in common that a rapid dynamic equilibrium is established between a tiny concentration of a growth free, uh, growing free radicals and uh, a large majority of dormant polymer chains. Now, in this process, the each growing chain, this stay for a long time in the dormant state and then it is activated and adds a few monomer unit before becoming the dormant again. So, by this way, you can control the molecular mass of those polymers. Now, because of uh, the activation polymerization or deactivation process, this is a random process, the molecular weight distribution of growing chains become narrower as they grow larger or longer in size. So, the distribution or a range is become narrower and narrower over the period of time because over the period of time, the, the nascent um, monomers, they may get depleted over the period of time. Now, the composition of the polymer chain, this can be easily modified by controlling the monomer composition in the reactor. The termination between the active radical is minimized by uh, simply maintaining its concentration at a low value because uh, the termination is very crucial. At right time, you need to truncate the growth of the polymer chain. So, that is why the, uh, the concentration of uh, these active radicals is very important. So, in case if you are having the high value, in that case, this uh, the termination reaction would be very difficult. Now, in the CRP method, uh, these CRP methods, they are differ in the way which these dormant species are formed. Now, uh, these free radical polymerization is highly exothermic in nature and a reactor temperature control is very important aspect. Otherwise, this rise in temperature may trigger the further polymerization and sometimes this polymer, polymer mass may get charred. So, the temperature control is very important to maintain the polymer quality and operational safety. Now, at the temperatures used for the commercial practice, most radical polymerizations are irreversible. Now, because this is an exothermic reaction at sufficiently high temperature, the reaction become reversible and complete conversion cannot be achieved. And this is uh, irony in the polymerization process that complete conversion is a difficult task. Methyl methacrylate is a major monomer that suffers from, from this problem with the equilibrium concentration of 0.139 mole per liter at 110 degrees Celsius. Another class of polymerization is anionic polymerization. As the name or the class implies, this requires the presence of an initiator that provides the initiator anions. Now, this anion can only attack those monomers whose electrons can be moved in such a way that a monomer anion results. So you see in this particular uh, structure, now this is the initiator and this forms this anion and this further propagates the anionic polymerization reaction. So, you see that uh, everywhere you will find this anionic uh, polymer or anionic uh, monomer. Now, ani uh, anionically polymerizable monomer, they should contain electron accepting groups. Now, this includes the styrene, acrylic monomer, some aldehydes and ketones and a cyclic monomer such as ethylene oxide and other oxidants, the carboxylic anhydrides, glycolides, lactams, lactones that can be polymerized by the ring opening polymerization. So, it gives enough opportunity for the polymerization process. Now, the kinetic steam does not include the termination because in well purified system, most macro ions, they grow until all the monomers present in the reactor are polymerized. It is a plus way and a minus way because it can purify the reaction mass, but simultaneously the control mechanism should be robust. Now, such polymerization, this uh, they are called the living polymerization because if additional monomer is added into the reactor 
uh, of the polymer chain this undergo further growing a characteristics of these living polymerization is that they provided the the initiation is quick enough all polymer chains grow to a similar extent yielding a very narrow molecular weight distribution uh, let us talk about the cationic polymerization now in cationic polymerization the cationic initiator formed from the carbonium salt now the bronsted acid or lewis acid they react with the monomer to give the monomer uh, cations now that upon addition of more monomer becomes macro cations now monomer suitable for the cationic polymerization should have electron donating groups like olefins ch2 chr r represent the chain with electro rich substitutes the compound r2 c z with the the heteroatoms or hetero groups called z and the cyclic molecule molecules with the heteroatom as a part of the ring structure now there are many more cationically polymerizable monomers than anionically polymerizable ones relatively few cation polymerizations like isobutane polymerization to produce the polyisobutane and butyl rubber copolymer of isobutene with a small fraction of isoprene they are performed industrially because macro cations are highly reactive and prone to suffer termination and chain transfer reaction so the control of the reaction or propagation of the reaction is very important in the previously the termination was important here the propagation is important let's talk about the step growth polymerization this step growth polymerization this proceed by the reaction of a functional group uh, of the reactants in a step wise manner and the monomer reacts to form the dimers monomers trimers dimers they react for the trimers in general like different type of they form the uh, different type of mers like uh, this monomer this monomer react form this one like uh, dimers trimers like this now the chemical reaction that may be used to synthesize material by step growth polymerization this includes the esterification amidation transesterification and the formation of uh, urethanes among others so all step growth polymerization they falls into two groups depending on the type of monomers employed the first one implies the use of at least two bifunctional and the polyfunctional monomer each one possessing a single type of active group the monomer involved in this type of a reaction they are often represented as aa or bb like this where a and b are the different reactive groups an example of this particular reaction is the formation of a polyester from the diols and diacid here you see diols and diacid and they form this polymer now the second type of step growth polymerization this involves the use of monomer with different functional groups in the same molecule a b type of a monomer an example of this reaction is the production of nylon 1 1 from 1 uh, 1 amino uh, no uh, decanoic acid like this here you see this the the amino and decanoic acid now the bifunctional monomer such as aa or bb or ab this yields the linear polymers branch and uh, cross link polymers they are obtained from the polyfunctional monomers so this is uh, uh, the difference between these two class now let's take example of polymerization of a formaldehyde with phenol this may lead to the complex architecture now formaldehyde is commercialized as an aqueous solution in which it is presented as a methylene glycol which may react with the trifunctional phenol, uh, phenol. the reactive at uh, its two ortho and one para position now this type of a polymer architecture this depends on the reaction conditions now the polymerization under the basic conditions where you can maintain the ph from 9 to 11 or and with an excess of formaldehyde yields a highly branched uh, polymers results you see over here now in this case the polymerization is stopped uh, when the polymer uh, is is still liquid or a soluble phase the formation of the final network that is called the curing this is achieved during the application um, part 
that is like in foundry or a binders to make the the cores and mold for casting of steels iron and non ferrous so um, that means the termination it takes place during the course of application now under the acidic condition when the the ph is maintained between 2 and 3 with an excess of phenol linear polymer with a little branching they are produced and these are called the novolex now in a step growth polymerization the molecular weight continuously increases with the times and the formation of polymers with a sufficient high molecular weight for practical application now this requires a very high conversion of the react Uh, reactive groups sometimes more than 98 to 99 percent. Now this requirement imposes the stringent condition on the formation of the polymers by step polymerization. Now such as necessity uh, for a favorable equilibrium and absence of side reactions. Now in a, in a batch system, the equilibrium conversion is such that. only oligomers they are formed in practice these are the reactors from which the by product like water in the esterification process is continuously removed by using vacuum and or inner gases now this allows the shifting of equilibrium the forward direction hence achieving the high conversion and high molecular weight so because the chains are continuously reacting with the monomers or themselves so in that case you can anticipate the high molecular weight now this requires a reactor with the special geometrics or geometry now different type of uh, polymerization classes uh, which we discussed uh, this can be implemented uh, implemented in several ways like bulk polymerization solution polymerization the gas phase polymerization slurry polymerization suspension polymerization emulsion polymerization likewise now in bulk polymerization the only component of the formulation are monomer and the catalyst or initiator so these thing these uh, these 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 things are essential now when the polymer is soluble in the monomer the reaction mass remains homogeneous for the entire process example of homogeneous bulk polymerization there are the production of low density polyethylene referred as ldpe the general purpose polystyrene and polymethyl methacrylate pmma produced by this free radical polymerization and in the manufacture of many polymers they are produced by the step growth polymerization this includes the pet polyethylene terephthalate polycarbonate and nylons the main advantage of bulk polymerization is they are very pure polymer produced at a very high production rate per unit volume of the reactor but there are certain drawbacks also attributed to this process is that uh, the removal of polymerization heat is extremely difficult because of high viscosity of the reaction mass this is associated with the high concentration of polymers see when these chains polymeric chains are entangled in each other so the viscosity will be very high so you need to control the the temperature it's a very difficult the thermal control of the reactor is more difficult in the free radical polymerization than in the step growth polymerization the reason is that the high molecular weight these are achieved in free radical polymerization hence the viscosity is higher and heat removal rate is lower the way of achieving good thermal control and avoiding the use of solvent is to use the suspension polymerization so this is another class now in this process drops of monomer containing the initiator they are suspended in water like this this is a chamber and here you see that the the monomer this contains the initiator and this this is they are dropped in the the water now each droplet act as a small bulk polymerization reactor and the internal viscosity of the droplet increases with the monomer conversion and the viscosity of the suspension remains low allowing the good heat transfer so you see that the water can act as a heat transfer agent now suspension stability and the particle size distribution they are controlled by the agitation and the type and the concentration of the suspension agent a particular product um, with a diameter ranging from 
10 micrometer to 5 mm, this can be obtained easily. Now, these particles contain the suspension agents, although some removal is possible, the final product inevitably contains some amount of suspension agents. So, free radical polymerization is implemented only in the suspension polymerization. Expandable polystyrene and PVC and the product, uh, these are produced by this process. Emulsion polymerization. This is the polymerization technique leading to polymer finely di dispersed uh, particle diameters usually ranging from say 80 to 500 nanometer in a continuous medium and this medium is sometimes uh, uh, like water. Now, this uh, product is frequently called latex. Now, only free radical polymerization has been commercially implemented in the emulsion polymerization. The basic formulation includes the monomer, emulsifier, water and a water soluble initiator. Usually, these monomers are dispersed in 10 to 100 micrometer droplets under agitation. The amount of emulsifier is enough to cover these droplets and to form a large number of micelles. Radicals formed by decomposition of uh, the initiator, they start the polymerization in the aqueous phase. The oligomer formed enter in the, the micelles or precipitate in the aqueous phase, in both cases forming the tiny polymer particles. So, the growth of these particles by the polymerization, this leads to the final latex. And the monomer droplets, they act as a monomer reservoirs and almost no polymerization occurs in them. So, this is the beauty of this particular technique. The particle size of the latex is not determined by the size of the monomer droplet, but by the number of particles formed. So, the size of the monomer does not matter. Now, the thermal control of these process is easier than the bulk polymerization and emulsion polymerization commercialized the dispersed polymers. They are used for the paper coating paint, adhesive and additives for textiles and the construction materials. So, the polymerization of ethylene is often carried out in a gas phase using the heterogeneous uh, co coordination catalyst and the polymer is formed on the active sites of the catalyst forming an expanding catalyst polymer particles. So, the gaseous monomer diffuses uh, uh, through the pores of the particles and through the polymer to reach the active sites. Slurry polymerization, this is often used in the manufacture of the polyolefin. Initially, the reaction uh, system consists of uh, the catalyst dispersed or dissolved as in the case of soluble uh, metallocene catalyst in a continuous medium which may be a diluent in which the monomer is dissolved or pure monomer and the polymer is insoluble in the continuous medium. Therefore, it precipitates on the catalyst forming slurry. HDP is produced in a slurry of isobutane that is called the Chevron Phillips process. Now, let us have a brief discussion about the main commercial polymerization. Now, yearly world production of synthetic pro, uh, polymer exceeds almost 200 million metric ton and about half of this amount corresponds to polyolefins. Now, here you see that 17 uh, percent um, uh, at uh, polypropylene attributed to the world polymer market, HDP 16, LLDP 11 percent, LDP 8 percent, likewise different polymers, they contributes to the world polymer market. Now, the main uh, commercial polymers, they are polypropylenes, uh, HIPP is uh, the composite polymer composed of a, by the soft ethylene uh, propylene copolymer dispersed in the matrix of uh, polypropylene. Now, the main use of polypropylene, they are fiber, filament, carpets, raffia bags, netting, cord edge, clothings, non-woven fabrics, etc. Films like food packaging, sometimes used as stationery, automotive parts, appliances, rigid packing, general consumer products. Polyethylenes, this includes HDPE, LLDPE, LDP. The main difference among all these polymers, this is referred in this particular thing, the chain architecture. Here you see that this is the HDP and more number of the branch chain are there in LLDPE and you see that this architecture of LDPE branched with um, a large amount of short branches. 
Now, HDPE is a linear polymer with the almost no branches and LLDPE is a linear polymer with the varying amount of a short branches and LDPE is having the, the long branches in their basket with a large amount of short branches. Now, melted linear polyethylene chain crystallizes um, upon cooling this yielding a semi-crystalline polymers about 60% of crystallinity. Now, the crystalline fraction decreases as the branching increases and LLDPE and LDPE, they are the amorphous polymers. Now, if we compare with the LDPE produced by the free radical polymerization, the LLDPE exhibits a higher melting point. This object can be used as at higher temperature. It is stiffer, thinner walls can be used and the presence, uh, this presents higher tensile and impact strength. So, the physical property as well as the chemical property, all these things are essential. So, they are more resistant films. The processability of LLDP is worse than the LDP because of variety of the reason and the way of improving processability is to produce the bimodal molecular weight distribution. HDP is a preferred material for blow molding containers, we will discuss later on. Um, this is for the liquids as it combines the adequate environmental stress crack resistance with high rigidity. Sterinic polymers. Now, the sterinic polymers, this includes the general purpose polystyrene, HIPS, expendable polystyrene, styrene acrylonitride, sometimes referred as SAN and ABS copolymers. The mechanical properties of uh, the general purpose polystyrene, they are mainly determined by the molecular weight. And this molecular weight ranges from uh, 1 lakh 50,000 to 4 lakhs. The strength and the resistance of to heat distortion increase and this uh, uh, increasing the molecular weight, but the melt viscosity increases making the process more and more difficult. Lubricants like butyl stearate, this can be added to decrease the viscosity, but they are also lowering the softening point of the polymers. Now, the low viscosity. Um, or low molecular weight, its grades they are used for the injection molding, uh, whereas the high molecular weight grades are used for the extrusion of film and sheets. Now, during the processing of melt uh, polystyrene, this is forced to the narrow nozzle and because of the high shear, the polymer chain orient uh, the parallel to the flow and cooling is usually fast and orientation is often maintained to in the solid polymer leading to anisotropy in the polymer properties. Uh, the properties of uh, HIPS, they are mainly determined by its complex three-phase uh, morphology composed by rubbery polybutyne cellular particles dispersed in polystyrene matrix and the polybutadiene particles contain inclusion of polystyrene. The rubbery domain allow the distribution of the stress concentration in a large volume, toughening the material. Therefore, the impact resistance of these polymer is much higher than that of the general purpose polystyrene. Expendable polystyrene. This is the, the raw material and fabricate to, uh, expanded polystyrene. It is produced in the form of a small polystyrene beads and uh, swollen with 4 to 7 weight percent of blowing agent molded expanded polystyrene manufactured by the expansion and subsequent steam molding of expandable polystyrene. The main market they are the packaging, insulation, flotation, geofoam, etc. Most of the, uh, the properties of expanded uh, polystyrene, this depends on the apparent density. Lower density leads to the poorer mechanical properties and the higher water absorption and permeation rates. So, the durability may be on the lower side. Now, expandable polystyrene foams, they have application in the thermal insulation, impact soundproofing, uh, form work element for concrete in the building industry, insulation of the cold storage depot and storage molded part of for packaging. PVC, the polyvinyl chloride, this is produced mainly by the suspension polymerization and the lower amount of, uh, pro, uh, by, they are produced by the emulsion and a bulk polymerization. The properties of the PVC, they are largely due to the bulky chloride atom that leads to an almost syndiotactic configuration. Now, neat PVC is intrinsically unstable because when subjected to heat, molecular defects um, in some of the polymer chain initiates a self-accelerating dehydrochlorination reaction. In addition, PVC is a rigid material.
So the PVC is uh, heavily compounded with the heat stabilizer, lubricant, different type of processing adds, plasticizer, impact modifiers and fillers. After polymerization, the PVC is a particulate polymer and particle morphology in a particular porosity is a key characteristic because it determines the easiness of incorporation of different additives. This is used for the construction, window frames, pipes, roofing, cable, domestic goods like flooring, wall covering, shower curtains, leather cloths, etc., packaging, etc., all these things, but it has some environment issues. Water bond dispersed polymers. Uh, water bond dispersed polymer includes both synthetic polymers dispersion and natural rubber. Now, the synthetic polymer dispersions, they are produced by emulsion polymerization. A substantial part of synthetic polymer dispersion is commercialized as a dry product. This includes the styrene butadiene rubber for tires, nitrile rubbers, about 10% of the total PVC production, 75% um, of total ABS or redispersible powder for construction materials. Now, carboxylated styrene butadiene copolymer, acrylic and styrene, styrene acrylic latexes and vinyl acidate homopolymer, the copolymers, they are main polymer classes commercialized at dispersion. The main market for this dispersion are paint, coating, paper, coating, adhesive and carpet blanketing. Polyesters and polyamides, polyethylene terphthalate, PET and polybutylene terphthalate, PBT are the main polyester. PET is mainly produced by the esterification of the terephthalate with ethylene glycol and transesterification of the dimethyl terephthalate with the butyl glycol is butylene glycol is still the main process of manufacturing of PET, PBT and PBT. And this PBT are partially crystalline polymers. They have the high hardness and stiffness, good resistance to weathering and creep resistance and high dimensional stability. Most of the PET is processed into the fibers. Other applications are gas tight bottles or for carbonated beverages and highly stressed technical molded parts such as bearing, gear teeth, con connector, bolts, screws and washers. Typical application of the PBT are in automotive industry, headlight frames, wiper arms as well as the domestic appliances and the electrical and electronic industries. Polyamides, they are the polymers that contain amide group CONH. Proteins, synthetic nylons are polyamides. So, ny nylon 6 produced by the ring opening polymerization of caprolactam and nylon 66 is made from the diamine and dipic uh, acid to, uh, which uh, um, each which the six carbons are the main synthetic polymers. Nylons are resistant to oil solvent and they are present toughness, fatigue, abrasion resistance, low friction stability at elevated temperature, fire resistance, good appearance and good processability. So, in this particular chapter, we discussed different type of uh, commercial polymers along with the different type of uh, polymerization techniques. So for uh, your convenience, we include the references which can be utilized in due course of time. Thank you very much.